The world's greatest casters leading you through the best games here at the International 2017. We've got TNC versus Team Empire. I'm Capitalist. This is the wonderful Draskal. Welcome, everybody. World's greatest. World's greatest group stage casters. High five. High five. Hell Easy. Yeah. Whoa. Damn. All right. We just had we had a little issues with our silencer last game. Neither one of us was were. The biggest fan of that hero. Maybe Team Empire can craft a lineup around that silencer that will appease both of our critical souls a bit better. I think so. I, Empire has shown uh, some some pretty solid games. We had a chance to cast them yesterday. They, they didn't look too bad. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen TNC personally because we had a pretty weird schedule yesterday. I think we did like one, three, and four, something like that. So yeah. between matches, we had to like go eat and then come back and. It was a bit of a hectic day, but from everything that I've heard, uh, TNC is doing fairly well right now. So I, I think that, you know, Theban's influence on the team has continued to be a, a positive thing for them. Whereas Empire, you know, they, they've had a, a new face as well as everyone probably knows by now, Resolution standing in, yep. in the place of Chappie. And Resolution is a phenomenal player, so they've also found a little bit of success so far in the group stages. Both of these teams, I think that they're around middle of the pack right now, within sure. a game or two. And, you know, this is the really important time, I think, to establish yourself. You really want to get to that top half of the group. You know, yeah. you want to you wanna get a 2-0 somewhere, at the very least, to put yourself in a good spot. So the longer the, the games go on, the more important they become and where we're starting to get to. So TNC kind of taking their time here after seeing Empire just throw a silencer out there. They're kind of just like, <laughs> huh. 1437 is a little bit stymied by it. Uh, he's going to start with the Disruptor. That's a Theban classic. Yes, sure. he is. Theban, <laughs> maybe because they took the Silencer, which is also a Theban classic, he's like, all right, you're going to take one of my classic heroes. I've got another one in my back pocket. Hold on. I like it. I like it a we lot. We haven't seen too much uh, too much Disruptor, though. Not thoughts? you and I personally. Yeah. I know for a fact that in the first day, we had like 90-something heroes picked. So yeah. I'm sure that some other team has played him. But yeah, you and I personally have not seen it. A whole Ooh. heck of a lot, and we are going to see a Naga here. I'm guessing with the hero pairing that it's probably going to be a core, but hey, EG yesterday showed that they're willing to put it in the support position. I'm sure that TNC can do the same. They Don't showed it again today, actually. I was checking one of the EG games. They had uh, another, another yeah, Naga, so... That worked out really well for them when we saw it. We are going to have the uh, Earthshaker picked up. I feel like that's pretty standard. Nice, strong initiator. I mean, I argue it's probably uh, the best uh, all-around offlaner right now. I don't think there's like any real weaknesses to the to the hero. So, unless you're playing against the Clockwork and you can't cast spells. Even even that, I'm kind of okay with, cause you're so tanky, you know. Yeah. And Clockwork's so crappy on damage now, that uh, it's annoying. But eventually, you're gonna get your four staff, right? Yeah, that's that's kind of how you have to play the game. It's like I need one or two items, but then I'm good. And after that, I, I have like my full influence in the game, get the want. So, bans coming in here from TNC, taking out the AM, taking out the Morphling. Classic, I, I don't want to say like hard counters to Naga, but they're heroes that function okay in that matchup. Because like AM, for example, he gets his farm before the Naga is really online. And you can sure. typically end the game before the Naga gets to that critical mass. Morphling, you know, you replicate, even if it's a Naga Siren Illusion, you get the full effect of the replicate in it really frustrating to play into that during fights and whatnot so yeah it seems to me like they're yeah and alchemist same thing it's like alchemist hits his stride way before naga siren so to me the second pick into like triple ban is just setting this core naga up yes absolutely i am full on board with the core naga siren that it seems to be the only answer to these bans from uh tnc you want to know a fun fact about uh dream league planet odd went in there and when they first started the reason Resolution was playing so much Animage and some Arc Warden is because he's he told his team that's all he wanted to play. <laughs> he's like, if it doesn't start with A, I'm not playing it. Oh, Arc Warden Lord. and Animage. Obviously, that changed later on as they yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. progressed through the tournament. But uh, that <laughs> that was the start. Was AM, AM, AM. Arc Warden, AM. There's the Clockwork versus the Earthshaker. I, I like the Clockwork a bit more here because... I feel like it's the worst of the four positions right now. Like, I, I feel like it's on, like, Tusk's level. I don't know if it's, like... I, I think that Clockwork offers a different tool set than Tusk. 
-hmm. Because Tusk has, I would say, probably better kill potential early because he can get in. But Clockwork has to walk in. Yeah. But as soon as they hit six, I think Clockwork's better. Yeah, they, they're definitely a little bit different, but I feel like if you look at the four position tiers, you know. Yeah, he's, like... he's definitely not as good as he used to be. Yeah. But against Earthshaker, fantastic, obviously. But then against the Silencer, I think that's a uh, support that is just completely crushed by Clockwork because he has no defense mechanisms and he's just easily, uh, easily killed by that battery assault. Yeah, whenever you have these no escape tool heroes, Clockwork becomes infinitely better. And it's one of those things where if you're running it in the support capacity, which we don't know 100% yet. Right. You know, it could be Sam Age still playing the, the Clockwork, but if it is a support, I think it's a lot more forgiving. Whereas a lot of the time as Clockwork, if you walk to the off lane, you have this situation where you're like, okay, if I don't win my lane, I am screwed because I'm yeah. just going to feed the whole game. For sure. So I, I think it's probably going to be support, um, especially considering the other hero that is probably going to be played by Theban as a disruptor. I think that the pairing is still all right. Another Legion coming out, this time from Empire. I will never get tired of watching that hero. I love it. Yeah, and I think it's very good here, right? You have um, some clear initiators from TNC, uh, the Clockwork and, and the Disruptor, but they don't necessarily output the fastest damage. So you're going to feel very comfortable uh, as a Legion commander going in the Blink Duel. And then obviously the, the, the clear factor is that you want any sort of hard lockdown versus an Aga Siren you could possibly get. Yeah. And there's not too many... Uh, forms of lockdown that are greater and longer than dual. And don't forget about overwhelming odds just smashing illusions. That's like true that, as well. Yeah. That's like one of the best things. But they're going to counterpick the Legion Commander. Oh, that is a such a good hero against Razor versus Legion. Actually, all of their heroes suck against Razor. I mean, Shaker, you could like 50 50 it, I guess. You know, you get Blink Dagger, you can still get your initiation, you can still stun the hero. It's just that Razor is always build tanky and. The hero in the team fights is probably not going to be standing too close to, to many other people, you know. He's the mm -hmm. one who's usually more in your face, so if it's going to be anyone, it's probably going to be Clock. So yeah, I really like that pick a lot. I feel like TNC's draft right now is is very well-rounded, because even though they have this really kind of greedy hero in the Naga, and you know, we talk about it potentially being a core because of the bans, who knows? You know, they could at the last second decide to, to do what Ichi did yesterday and say, nah, maybe there's a better option, but for now, if it does end up being a core Naga, the Razor is just going to wreak havoc against Team Empire's heroes. They do not have an answer for Razor yet. And if it's a support Naga Siren, it's still very helpful for the Razor because it's a tanky frontliner that can kind of create some space for Razor. It has a hard lockdown with the ensnare, and it also has the minus armor aspect, which Razor is going to love as well. Yep. I was just saying, like, one of the, the great heroes against the Razor is the OD, but I feel like he's been out of the meta for a little while now. I've been seeing him creeping back up, but maybe that's just because uh, 747 Eric Dong has just been spamming it a lot versus yeah. uh, the Arc Warden players, Eternal Envy and, and Arteezy and Pubs. So maybe I'm just a little bit biased towards it, but I feel like it's kind of coming back a little bit. The thing is, traditionally, Razor used to be the counter to OD in lane. But if they think that they're going to get a different lane matchup than that, then it's fine because OD, again, kills illusions pretty much in one hit. Yeah. So if the Naga Siren's like split pushing and stuff, OD can always deal with that. He does wave clear okay. It's not like top tier, but it's decent. And he also it just does insane amounts of damage against heroes that don't want to buy BKB. So Naga. So yeah. even if you're not hitting the illusion, you're hitting the actual hero, you can, you can blow her up relatively fast. So I think at some point, the OD will be able to offer a lot of utility to what TNC have. You know, you have the, the save. If you get glimpsed or whatever, you can imprison and stuff. Actually, does it still send you back if you get imprisoned? Oh, uh, yeah. a glimpse. I yeah. would imagine it, yeah, does, it does, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's weird, but I'm pretty sure they, like it'll show the graphic on one spot, but you'll end up on... Right, right, right. The glimpses. So you can you can save from like clockwork cogs, I guess, and like if you get ensnared, but... Mostly, I think it's for the illusions and the damage. Because like you said, they don't really have much damage between a Shaker and a Silencer. So yeah. the OD solves that problem, at least. Tinker ban by Team Empire. That would be, uh, I guess, a nice way to give TNC still better late game. And of course, the TNC Tinker is always something you have to worry about. There's actually a TNC hero right there, the Phantom Lancer. Instead, going to be picked up by Team Empire as their... Uh... It's gotta How be... does Doppelganger work versus Static Link? 
It doesn't break unless the doppelganger physically moves your hero out right. of range. So I think you still have to have the OD versus Razor mid, right? If Razor's mid. Yeah, but I think it's probably going to be Legion off lane. So you want Razor safe lane? I would I would actually prefer Naga mid this game, but it, it depends. I mean, it, whatever TNC feels is the best possible lane scenario, because they have last pick, right? So I'm guessing they're either going to pick another support or the off lane, depending on if they want to put Sam H on Clockwork, if they want to give him something else. But the... Yeah, the last ban being a... Uh... Wait, they lost Ban Tinker. They're choosing mid. They don't have a whole lot of options. So, yeah, they're going to they run Razor mid, and they're going to run safe lane Sven. Uh, Sven is a great answer to the Phantom Lands here. Uh, I think it's pretty good versus the Legion Commander and OD as well. I am a bit worried about the OD getting a, a bit out of control here. Yeah. The hero has a lot of potential in this game to, to go crazy. Yeah, they just don't have, like, uh, really hardcore, like... We are definitely going to force fights on you, and there's no way you can fight back. I don't know. It's just something about it. Like, they've got the clockwork initiation, I guess. But I think for me, it's the the Naga Siren that really stands out as a, as a hero that may not be able to fully force things. I guess that they're using an aggressive sleep into the Disruptor, Static Storm, Kinetic Field combination. It's a really great way to kill the OD or the Phantom Lancer. Yeah, what I also see is, like, the disengage that TNC has. You know, you can drop defensive cogs. If someone gets dueled, you can just song. Like, you yeah. song into the setup of the Static Storm and the Kinetic Field, which is something we used to see like a year or two ago when a lot of people were playing those heroes together. So they have ways of initiating, but once BKBs come out, I think it could definitely be a problem for TNC unless Raven is just going ham. And, yeah. you know, Raven is a fantastic core player, so I would imagine that his Sven is going to get a lot of farm very, very quickly. That's also something, too, I think, to keep in mind for this game. Like, how fast Raven gets online is going to be very, very important because if he's ahead of resolution and farm spend decimates Peel, like right. you just can't fight into it. It's it's too much. A lot of that's going to revolve around his BKB blink timing as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. You know, the more I look at, I'm just not sure Empire with their Earthshaker Silencer combination. I guess the more I look at it, the more I was, uh, the more I start favoring TNC's lineup. I would normally say the same thing. Except their laners are very independent. Like, OD, PL, and Legion are all really strong heroes. Yeah. Like, in the lane themselves. But if you had, like, I don't know, like a Spectre or something, just to, to name a, a weak laner, then I would say, yeah, it's a lot worse. Because you're not really going to have that influence of your, your Shaker and your Silencer winning you the lane. You're going to have to rely on the heroes themselves who are being there farming, being strong on their own. Right. And I think that Empire do actually have that. No invasion this time. These teams are actually just going to sit and take their own bounty runes. Either side looking to contest. So we are going to have Sam H on his clockwork. Sam H, uh, I think like he can be sometimes a bit hit or miss um, in his nature as an offlaner. But he has like really high highs. Yes, that's exactly like what I was going to really say. Really like, high highs. On, on like his face's void or, or some of these more aggressive offlaners like clockwork. Like he can just take over a game. And that's where you're hoping here for TNC. But that's actually bottom lane where they are going to go for an invasion here. Feeling that they just have a stronger heroes at level 1. They're probably right, too. Tim's going to take up that bounty rune. Doing the combination of Sven and Naga Siren leading the way. And then just the ineffectiveness of these heroes like Silencer, OD, and, and Legion Commander. There's just no damage you can lay into these heroes. So they just kind of run into you. There's not, nothing you could do and you just have to run away. Let him take that. Nice block out there by Roger here in the top lane. Sam H is going to be able to cut and take that creep wave along with him, but uh, it did cost him a decent chunk of his HP. Well, the cool thing about this is that you're going to pretty much guaranteed get level 2 because you only need like this and one extra creep, basically, yeah. and you're there. So that'll help a lot. And he's going to pull it between the tower. Pretty standard stuff coming in here from Sam H. Roger's just like, please stop. Just, just bring my creeps back, man. That was actually super oh, value, that yeah. cog. Like getting the bounce on the way out as well. And if he deals his clarity, almost gets there and not quite though. Nice nah, got boots. Meanwhile, mid lane, this is this is where Silencer really shines. It's not against aggro dual lanes. He doesn't provide a whole lot of threatening power in uh, against some of these off laners and such. What he does though is harass really well, and that's oftentimes why he's best placed mid in the beginning of the game. Just constantly throwing out those uh, those arcane curses and trading right clicks because at the end of the day you're gonna go back as a support 
once you're thrown blown through your mana pool and you've lost some HP. But this this enemy mid laner has to stay in his lane. He can't just run back to the fountain like you can. Yeah, it's really frustrating uh, if you're in this position. You know, we talked about the, the support of the Shaker and the Silencer maybe not being as strong. Was he actually wow. dead? He is very close to dying. Did, does have the Fairy Fire. And uh, that was just enough. Looks like he would have still been left on 10 HP even if he didn't Fairy Fire. But he's going to pop his healing cell. He's going to lose part of it. Maposhka manning up underneath the tower. The beauty of getting level 2 on Silencer. Now you have two annoying spells. You've got Arcane Curse, and now you can ignore Creep Aggro and Tower Aggro with Glaives of Wisdom. I think orb walking is one of the most frustrating things in Dota. And here comes the body block. Oh, the imprison. Uh, doesn't actually hit the Fissure damage. Blocks him off. But uh, he may be missing that damage as Cuckoo might just be able to run away here. He's going to start booking it up north. Sees the double damage. Denies it. Going to go for the deny from Roshan. But damn, Maposhka. That was way more damage than I was expecting from that last hit. But he still managed to get it. Gets the intelligence too. Added bonus. So this is actually something that I feel TNC will need to deal with. They need to send someone else there. I guess the choice is going to be Tim's. He's the more mobile hero. He's tankier. You know, 6 base armor, 320 base movement speed. I think people, they need to not underestimate low level knock. This hero is actually super hard to deal with. I mean, her base damage isn't fantastic, but she's just so tanky. And her mana cost per damage dealt is still pretty decent. Like, yeah. I think at level 1, Riptide is better than Void. And Void is uh, Night Stalker, like one of the best level one spells for harassment. Mm. TNC checking to see if the Cuckoo's gonna get ganked again by a uh, Silencer or a Shaker. Instead, or Shaker's actually top lane, gets a body block onto Sam Major, or Fisher block rather, but nothing really gonna come of it. In fact, Resolution's out of mana, so Roger is gonna take a large amount of damage from this battery assault. Now, I don't think Sam H can really chase this, he tries. But once he gets to the creep wave, loses a lot of his damage onto those random crops. But this is something that's really good for TNC, right? Because they had, like, you know, Cuckoo was suffering, probably still going to be, you know, having a bit of a hard time in the middle lane. So it's nice that Sam H is able to play this as aggressively as he is without really getting punished too much. Tim's going to come forward, throw his illusions to stop the pull. Nice little play. Not sure if he'll actually take any of this pull if not, but keep Sam H in a very forward position. I think that's actually like one of the hardest double stacks to kill. Because it's the, the Vool the healers, Assassins yeah. and the healers together. Because those things do the most damage and the, the healing can Cuckoo's up. dead! Oh my. He's got a lot of damage soaked up, so if you can actually juke this around and turn around with a healing salve, he'll get a lot of damage onto Empire. As you can see, FN drops dangerously low. They just managed to get vision on him, though. They actually would have killed the Razor now. It's Maposhka who's going to die instead. Go stick with a haste rune, run around, but there's no heroes that are really low enough for him to threaten, especially as a level 3 Legion commander. It's not much there in his, uh, his bag of tricks. I just imagine if Tim's had ensnares instead of the yeah. mirror image. Fisher Block is there. FN is going to try and fight. Now, he's missing a lot of his damage, so he's operating mostly off of the Arcane Orb, but it is enough with the help of Maposhka. That's the nice thing about this dual lane. They they lose their damage, but they still have this alternate source of damage, Blades of Wisdom, as well as the Arcane Orb. So they still hit okay, even when they're missing 30 damage or so. As long as FN has the, the mana, that's the issue. Sometimes you get unlucky as OD, yeah. and you, you don't get the Essence Orb procs, and you just... You look at your team, and you're like, guys... Guys, what do I do? Do I actually go back to base? Because OD hates going back to base. Yeah, he's not a terribly fast farmer. A little bit better than he used to be thanks to the uh, wave clear that is offered by Astral Imprisonment, but he needs a strong lane most of the time anyway. I still think it's... Okay, here we go. Three-man gank. Tempted, but... Attempt is all it is. In fact, he's going to turn around here. Nice Fisher block. Tim's does not end up on the other side of the Fisher, but the confusion is enough for him to be able to escape. Uh, meanwhile, top lane, Sam H. Doesn't get the cogs, but he does get the burn onto Resolution. He's actually completely out of mana, so... Sam H is, is doing a good job putting pressure on Resolution, but it hasn't actually resulted in a real change, especially since now he's going to end up dying with a Mango and a Fisher block. Empire actually does manage to get that kill, so we went from... Him doing good job pressuring and everything, but no real CS difference. To now him actually dying. 
He's getting more, I would say, yeah, he's getting a sizable amount more than Gossip is. Although, Legion has the benefit of being able to walk to the jungle where Clockwork doesn't really do that. Yeah. I think as soon as Sam H hits 6, uh, he's just not going to want to be up here anymore. He's probably going to want to try to kill mid, you know, either find the Earthshaker, find the Silencer. Those are, like, guaranteed kills if right. you land a hook. I think that's where Sam H is going to start to kind of come into his own in this game and, and find that opportunity to create space for Raven and, and possibly Cuckoo as well. That's why Tim needs to get out of here. Gotta get my level six, homie. Yeah, that's when you just rage ping as an elf player. You're like, please just go, because I'm like so close to level six, dude. Why help you me here? out? You can come in a minute's time when I'm ready to leave the lane. Don't come first. Yeah. FN that's... gonna be forced to use the uh, block off here. Cuckoo is gonna take a lot of damage. Actually, turn fight FN, but the stun from Roger is too much. He had a one-one-one build. And that is just enough. A little mini stun up the aftershock and a big swing of the totem. Finish him off. Resolution hiding in the trees. Does have Doppelganger up. He just wants to keep his clarity intact. No real life threatening danger there. So far, pretty close early game. Even though Empire have the kill advantage, it's not much of a gold discrepancy at all. It's mostly about, you know, the off lane I think is going to be pretty important in this game. So we see Sam Edge eating a little bit of harassment here. But, you know, what can he accomplish now that he has the hook shot? what's going to be his his first plan. He opted to put two points in a cogs, a little bit unorthodox. Typically, you at least see one point in the flare because it's a great value skill. But maybe he's just banking on that support killing build, which I think this is better at getting the, the kills. I think he, he really wanted that mana burn against the Phantom Lancer. Yeah, that too. That's very good too. I guess resolution... Oh, he has a wand now, but before he did not, he did not have one. Sam H is not finding the Earthshaker, which is the easy kill that he's going to run into Resolution. Actually could be in some trouble here. He's going to go for the TP out. Nice reaction. It's smart play, but it really does delay his uh, first hook shot kill. TNC definitely need it right now with the way the laning phase is going. Empire currently up by 1k both gold and uh, a little bit less in experience. Well, Thieven just fought a smoke, so I'm assuming that the Disruptor is going to either try to move with the Clockwork, or they're going to try to help their mid. Or Cuckoo, man! They just will not leave this Razor alone! And you can see why! They've gotten kills off on him a plenty. Now, Roger is going to be traded, but well worth it for Team Empire. Sam H didn't have to blow his hook shot. If he sees the silencer, he could uh, potentially go for that kill, but he doesn't. I mean, I guess Legion actually is still... It's a bit harder of a kill for him, but it can still happen if you have some kind of follow-up damage. Raven does not have the magic damage to really follow that up with Storm Hammer. Ooh, they game. hit him with a scan too. Nice stuff from Empire. Yeah, Sam H is just kind of being met with resistance every everywhere he goes. Spotted, but not spotted at the same time. Mask of Manage for Raven. That is the uh, big highlight for TNT in this landing phase right now. The TNT, they do secure their safe lane quite well, and Raven is totally free farming. The Mask of Manage is already up on him. He's sitting at 4,200 net worth, following three members of Team Empire, their three cores. So what do you think about, like, not really abusing the kind of stacking potential when you have a Sven whose lane is, like, completely uncontested? You have a Naga. You can, like, triple camp stack with this hero. I do feel like their supports uh, this laning phase has been very lackluster for them. They haven't really accomplished as much as they, they should have because I, I don't think they, they... Oh, mid lane. Sam H is going to be able to catch FN. That's a big nice. kill. Sam H finally finds the opening. But yeah, it's not, it, they didn't secure mid for Cuckoo, that's for sure. He died a crap ton. They never really went top lane to help out Sam H. Not that he needed it. So there really should have been, you know, this huge sacks available for Raven as soon as he picked up his levels. Instead, he ends up dying to a gank from Team Empire because he's sitting in lane pushing out instead of farming in the jungle. Well, this time around, looks like Empire get the advantage, at least in regards to kills. I think it's better to kill Raven for Empire than it is for, you know, TNC to kill FN. Yeah. Just because Sven farms at such an accelerated rate. And Tim's picked himself up the, the foam as well. So he's, he's actually getting like a little bit going for him in, in regards to farm now. Oh, that net cast range was giant. Raven's going to be able to get there in time. Stops from the He's just hitting the creeps. Hitting the creep yeah, he's just hitting the creeps. I like it. 
putting that cleave to work. As soon as they do get that level 6 on Naga Siren, I'm interested to see what their rotation is, because uh, 1437 has been sitting at top ever since Sam H left. He's got his level 6 as well, so the combination that we talked about in the draft phase is available to them. Just a question of where do they want to go with it. Do they try and shut down the OD? Do they kill the Phantom Lancer? I feel like the Phantom Lancer is the the most worthy kill for that combination because it's such a guaranteed lockdown. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to kill him otherwise. They're going to find Gostic in the bottom lane here. Three heroes. God Strength popped. Tier 1 in the off lane is going to be dropping as well. So yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that killing the, the PL is the, the prize. That is the absolute best hero. On the, the other side of things, you could also just go for lane pressure. You could just take the tier 1 mid. Right now, Empire are not really in a great position to defend. FN doesn't have a ton of mana. There's no Echo either. They're Play running at five. Cuckoo like they've done so many times before, but Cuckoo actually wants to fight this because he's got some supports behind him. Now, the Fisher block doesn't allow him to pursue, but they do manage to get the limbs back. Roger is going to be the kill here. Cogs will stop the TP. Pretty easy. Oh, he's actually almost kills Cuckoo there. Jeez, that was a close one. Looks like Hookshot was still on cooldown there from uh, Sam H. Probably used it to kill the Legion. So Maposhka is going to be able to walk it off. In the meantime, Resolution gets the tower top. So again, Empire is still finding stuff. Even when they get like a hero picked off, usually it's a it's a support. I guess they, they've lost Gostic one or two times as well. But they're always, you know, doing something else on the map to compensate. It feels very reminiscent of the series we watched yesterday where Resolution was playing on the Luna and was just always in a good position to, to pressure lane. Yeah. And I think, again, this comes back down to the, the fact that the supports haven't had that big kill impact in the laning phase, while the Silencer and Earthshaker actually have. Scan towards bottom lane. Looks like they're trying to catch uh, Roger here for Sam H to get the glimpse back for him in the kinetic field. Cog's not necessary, but why not? Catch him 7 to 6. TNC up by a little. About to turn it to a lot if they can continue to take these towers like they're doing in mid. Now Raven just opting to go straight for the blink here. Just wants to be able to get in, get those kills. I think that more than anything, this helps set up more kill potential on the peel. Yes. Because that's like the the one hero where you're looking at it and you say, okay, you leave this thing alone for too long. Even against a, a Sven, if he plays the fight correctly, he can still do a lot of damage. Sam H curbing his way through the jungle. He was spotted by a ward. Resolution. Kind of making his way over there. Meanwhile, FN, how's he doing with the hand of Midas? Working towards the four staff. He's sitting at level 10. This is probably one of the moments where his life is going to be in the most amount of danger. A lot of heroes rotating towards him, looking to shut him down. Once he gets that four staff, though, it'll help out quite a lot versus Razor and Clockwork. Roger gets caught. The haste rune allows Sam H to be able to close that distance fast enough to stop the Fisher from being dropped. And battery assault, pew pew pew. He's actually going to jump forward, but he does manage to get dueled there by Gostic. FN with the silence, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be able to just teal that duel. And 1437 is also going to end up dying. Cuckoo stolen a lot of damage, and Tins is going to throw down the sleep to help TNC reset here. Now, Raven doesn't have his god strength, but they're still going to try and kill Gostic, and it's going to be really easy for them. That's the power of the Naga Siren with that minus armor. Duh, nice doppelganger there from Resolution, but he can still get caught, especially with the cleave, very quickly, allowing them to realize which one is real. Echo Sam hit onto three. Roger doesn't have that much in the Aftershock, though, and he's got it back himself away. The damage just wasn't there. Cuckoo will escape, and Raven and Tims are healthy enough to continue to farm if they want. That was actually a really fortunate team fight for Empire because I don't think they knew that God Strength was down. Like, Raven did a stack prior to taking the team fight in the middle lane, so I don't know if Empire had that information, because if they did and they took the fight, then it was just, you know, good on them. Otherwise, you know, God strength is up now, though. Yeah. And this is the problem. If he, been so easily threatened by two heroes in this game. Yeah, if he had that for the mid fight, they probably would have lost Rizzo and uh, the Earthshaker again. It would have ended up dying two times, but. At the end of the day, TNC is still taking a favorable engagement after the fact. They get the tier two in the off lane, easy peasy. I guess now we have to wait. You know, how long is it going to take? You know, Empire's Roger to get that blink dagger because the longer the game goes, Tim's just hitting creeps on TNC. Like he's going for the drums right now, hasn't finished. 
Does he go back for the, the team fight build? Yeah, he's just gonna go for the full mechanism on top of this. So he's he's actually pretty inflated in regards to net worth for his support. Yeah, he's just letting these three serve as uh, this kill crew. Raven, 1437, and Sam H. We've got nothing really else to do. Disruptor doesn't farm. He's already got the levels he needs. Especially level 9 with the uh, soon-to-be maxed out kinetic field for the static storm. Clockworks level 9 as well. He's got maxed out cogs. So he went for the max cogs build. Has the uh, level 3, or uh, sorry, the 3 attacks required now for the cogs. Which is really good against heroes like OD, who has super slow attack speed. Yeah, it's it's really strong for guaranteeing kills. That's, I think, the, the best part of the build. I guess the only thing that you could maybe consider a criticism about it is that when you have a disruptor on your team, any ability that provides vision is automatically better. Yeah. Tim's real close there. Still gets out. But that's that's my only, I guess, gripe about it is if you can't flare high ground, then you're just basically saying, Theban, if you don't Thunderstrike that hero and he walks into <laughs> uh, high ground, he's just gone. Yeah. You know? I think the other gripe would be about it is that Clockwork's Rocket Flare is really good for split pushing and just kind of keeping farm up on the Clockwork at all times. I Especially would... once you get to level 4, but that's the thing about They've got this 4 position that farms and pushes out waves a lot for them in the Naga side. Yeah, yeah. So. That's what I was going to say as well. Between Raven and Tim's, they don't really need the extra wave clear. Yeah. Even Cuckoo offers a tiny bit. You know, Plasma Field isn't the greatest, but it does do a little bit of damage. Smoke here in the meantime from TNC. Might find the Shaker again. Sam's going to lead with the hook shot. Easy kill on the Barrage. So I think what we're kind of saying is this build, it's like special, right? It's, it's special tailored for this game. Yeah, because he's got a Naga Siren that's going to clear waves and do a lot of farming. And I think it helps a lot for like heroes like Razor and Disruptor, right? They really like that holding mechanism. Goal is there, but the Global Silence in the response. They may still be able to finish off Cuckoo, but uh, not quite enough. The last word will finish him off, even if it's not dual damage. One, Sam H is going to be able to escape there. So Team Empire continuing that combination of the duel with the Global Silence, allowing for easy pickoffs and fights, but once it's down, TNC just kind of keep hitting them and win fights in return. So it's, I feel like those fights are kind of like a gimme. You know, TNC looking at it, well, of course you're going to win that fight. You know, you've blown a lot of big abilities, mostly the Global Silence. So once I think, we're revived, we we can fight again. In, in that sense, I'm with you. And I think at the same time, they kind of have to do it because once the Sven gets BKB, the fights are going to get a lot harder really, really quickly. And yeah. he is close. They do throw down a Glyph, and they're going to clear through all the illusions with the God Strength. Sam is actually in an awkward position with the last word, the Fisher, kind of separating them. TNC Pursue, not going to catch. Probably just knowing that Global is down, recognizing that Roger hasn't had the greatest game, so he doesn't have anywhere near the Blink Dagger money that maybe he would like. There's a lot of time for TNC to really reach their stride in this game. I think that was one of those fights, though, that Tim should have found a way to be in front of that tower before his allies made the initiation, you know? Like, I think that would have been a great speed catch opportunity. Right, no global silence, so if you throw down this combination, they can't do anything to stop you. Guaranteed, get two or three kills. We haven't seen that kind of initiation with the, the Song of Siren. I don't think the defensive Song of Siren is needed as much on the support now. Probably not right now, at least. I mean, later on into the game, if you see an Echo, and you're like, oh god, this is yeah, really bad for us, <laughs> then maybe then, yeah, maybe at that point in the game, you could justify popping the defensive song. But I do agree with the, the idea of having the Naga be the one standing in front of the tower. Either that or Sam H. They're the, the two best heroes for it. Yeah. Uh, the, the only downside was that Empire had some pretty good vision in the area anyway. Like they were on the high ground and attacking the tier 1 at the same time. So if you don't have everyone there and you're not ready to defend at the drop of a hat, you could very easily just get ran over in that kind of situation. Sam H going to be caught in the duel here. It's going to take a long time for them to actually bring down this tanky offlaner. In fact, he gets the cog separating himself from Gostic. There was no way Empire could kill him. Not with only two heroes. Too tanky. So TNC, you see that as an opportunity. Push top. Trade towers, most likely. Though I'm kind of down if Naga Siren wants to TP to bottom and set his team up with a Song of Siren TPs. It's no vision though, it's really hard. All yeah. you see is resolution and a Poshka. Okay, now the rest of them are showing. 
That's the the one oh, part about oh, it. Gonna, oh wait, they're gonna get scouted by the Phantom Lancer, but he might still be able to get this. Here the we go. Song out. Follow up. They've got Sam H coming in. 1437. Might have an opportunity. Looks like he's just locked down resolution with the static storm. They let it go, but a little late. Oh, he has the blink! So he blinks away before he takes the tick of damage. And now Gostic, he's gonna be caught by Raven with a BKB. So it's still definitely gonna be a lost fight for Empire, especially Resolution. He actually got caught inside the trees area, so he is still dead despite that blink dagger play. Doppelganger farther to the right, hiding or the trees, not. blink farther, has the TP, he's good! I called it too soon. Okay. Resolution, you. I need, devil. I need to say this before it's too late, but Poshka is a literal god. He globaled so the Naga couldn't cancel the song. Oh, that is sick. He I was wondering why yeah. he was holding he on to it. He globaled so he couldn't cancel the freaking song, so they were able to just <laughs> walk away. The kinetic field disappeared before the actual, uh, before the, the song was canceled. Yeah. I was like, what? I was like, well, why is he not letting I didn't go? even think about that. <laughs> I, was, I just thought, I was like, what? That's sick. Yeah, it's insane. Kitchen Roger. Roger almost gets the Fisher block. Not good enough. They actually slow him down. They really want to kill Raven here. They know his BKB is on cooldown, but they are going to be met with the rest of TNC. Tim's does not have his uh, Song of the Siren, so maybe instead of killing Raven, I'll kill him instead. It's one. Resolution. Blinking, doppelgangering, doing the whole shebang, trying to catch more heroes, but won't be able to find him just to pick off on Naga. It's still a fairly big kill. He's got a good amount of net worth. I mean, he's at Sam H's level of net worth at this point. 6.3k. He's doing pretty well. Going for the Guardian Greaves, obvious reasons. Playing against the Global, really annoying. That one fight bought him pretty much a showcase why it's so frustrating to play against it. Yeah. But I think we're still kind of waiting to see the, the real kind of big fight. You know, no Roshan has been done yet from either team. Raven's still kind of just farming away. Resolution's in the same boat, but, you know, Raven's net worth, you would typically see a Sven probably at least, like, two or three thousand above the next highest person. I think he's been running around a lot with his team, trying to find pickoffs and fights where he can ever since he's gotten his BKB, but they haven't really been able to just decisively run them over yet, and that's kind of what you want to do as a Sven. So what do they do next as TNC? Because I feel like they're the ones who kind of want to force the fight. You don't want to let Empire get that free setup, right? Where they get the duel, the global silence. You can't Song or Siren to stop anything. And they just get a free initiation sort of deal. Especially since they should know Roger's close to the Blink Dagger. So I kind of want them to be the ones to like smoke up and try and force a fight. Surprise Empire in some way. I'm just not really sure how they do that or how they set it up. Well, I think if they're going to try to do the song opening like they did before, they're going to have to either catch um, Aposhka or the Guardian Greaves are going to have to be done because then he needs a way to dispel Global. But if the game goes super late, I, a lot of the time Sven is a weird hero because you get like a crit later on after you, you have your other four core items and then you just start being able to win a fight based off one or two auto attacks critting. So there's always kind of that feeling of, okay, it's a Sven, you can still win the game, but it doesn't really feel good to play late game Sven, because there are going to be hexes, your BKB is going to be shorter, you're, you're a lot more team reliant than you want to be as a core hero at that stage in the game. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that if it goes too long, Empire might just be able to take the team fights based on having more scaling heroes than what TNC have, because Tim's is going for the support build, he's not going for Radiance. Yeah, this is definitely TNC very much focused on winning like at 35, 40 minutes. Uh, Empire playing the smoke and playing the high ground here, but they are going to be having a smoke from TNC. They blink for it. Oh, one able to catch Roger there. The global silence goes down, but no real hard initiation from Empire. In fact, Maposha is still going to be caught here inside the trees. He's dead, so he just throws out last word and a bunch of damage on Raven, stopping his uh, blink forward. Sam H still in a place here to make his initiation. If he wants to, goes for a Cogs. FN's going to be scared away by Raven. They go for the Song of Siren, but FN is going to be locked out by the ensnare. So, even if the Song of Siren couldn't stop, the OD, oh, nice blink away there from Gostic. They will manage to finally catch that silencer of the trees. I thought he would never die. Sam H looking around for some more heroes. They caught one. Roger going to be glimpsed back after the blink. Echo Slam gets thrown down, trying to buy him some space to escape. Looks like he could be good. Raven's getting there for the Stormhammer, but he decides to 
stop chasing and just turn around. Take that objective. They won the fight. They could lose the fight just as easily if they stick around for too long against this Phantom Lenses. That's the value of the poke, poke, poke. Gossip comes in with the dagger. No, it's barely enough to be able to finish him off. He wins the duel. And now Tim's is going to be up next on the Firewatch. Resolution almost kills him, but he managed to complete his TP. Sam H, nice hook shot over to the hard camp. Managed to get away from Empire. That's the problem. TNC, they, they stuck around too long against the Phantom Lancer. They waited out the God Strength and the BKB duration. That's the, the big thing about Sven is once his God Strength is down, he's pretty easy to kite. If you don't have BKB and there's a Diffusal Blade out on the field, even if you pop Warcry, it just immediately gets purged. You're not killing the Illusions fast enough. You can get overrun. Really unfortunate that the Glimpse didn't break the duel. Like, because the... At the very least, he might have been able to de-aggro the tower, but because he was still stuck in the duel, the tower just hitting him. Ended up getting the, the last hit and eventually making a, making it so Raven couldn't get away. But yeah, that was that was a really nice play, though, from the Naga. So he didn't actually song to catch the OD. He song so that no one else could help the OD. Yeah. Because he BKB'd. And once they get the net on him, there's no blink echo because you can't blink into song. You can't blink duel into song either. So knowing that there's multiple ways to initiate, Speaking oh, Resolution actually, ah, he still gets caught, gets the hook shot and the force back with the cogs. Great play from Sam H. They didn't even have uh, vision of that area. He just read the blink really well. What a god. Sam H is like one of my, he's one of my favorite offlaners to watch because like you said, he, he has this, I guess you could call it inconsistency, but when he plays well, he plays so well. Yeah. I think uh, whenever I think back to it, I think most of the time Sam H doesn't hit those marks. It's usually because the team plays super defensive kind of 5 mini. Yeah. That initiation style that he prefers is usually kind of lackluster against this. His hero pool kind of charge. reflects that. Like he plays the Nyx, the Clockwork, even Slardar, you know, every now and then. Those are the heroes that they want to go in. They don't, they don't want to sit back and hit creeps. I don't think I've ever seen Sam H even buy a Midas before. <laughs> like I don't think that guy knows how to, how to make a Midas. <laughs> We've got uh, Tim's finally finish up his Guardian Greaves, so we now have that counterplay to the initiation from Team Empire. This is something that I think could eventually transition into a real core if, if Tim's wants to. It just depends on how long the game goes, right? Yeah. Because eventually Raven's going to fall off, and his build is, is more around the I want to be super tanky during the mid-game, get my damage out, get my kills, because he's gone straight for the AC after the, the BKB is up, which means as soon as his BKB is down, he's going to be out of mana. So he's banking everything around his BKB duration right now. AC does nothing against OD. You're just going to get, you know, smashed by, by orb damage. And if you're just out of mana and you don't have God Strength, you're just not going to do enough damage because you don't have crit, you don't have, you know, the, the extra damage necessary. So I think it might be worth looking into if you're TNC at this point and thinking of a backup plan because I don't think you're, you're doing enough in the game at this point to feel comfortable. 2k net worth leads nothing, man. You know, it's like one fight. You know, Resolution at one time had the uh, BKB queued up. I'm glad he didn't go for it, though, because Raven is proven to be the biggest problem. Oh, Echo Sam goes down onto Raven while they get the duel onto Disruptor. That's a huge win. The BKBs go off, at least on FN, but now he's stuck by himself up against Raven with a BKB of zone. Finally, the BKB raids, and he's able to get off long enough with the Shrine. Maybe he can actually survive a little bit longer, but now Blade Mail with Sam H right on top. And now Gostic, he comes in, tries to save his OD. He may just end up dying as well. They actually get a really good Enchant Totem play there from Roger that brings a lot of them low. They just have to kite around Raven with Resolution, but he's actually stuck out by the Ensnare, has to pop the Doppelganger. Finally, they will bring Raven down. Cost them a two for two trade off there with Global Silence used as well, but I think that's the first fight that Empire actually remains standing toe-to-toe -to -toe against uh, TNC, and that's all because they found the initiation the easy one, too. It was a lot of time that they were able to buy by FN getting the, the final imprisonment on himself. Yeah. And the longer the fight lasts, if God's strength wanes, you know, we, we keep coming back to this point, but if Sven really is cooldown based as a core, there's not a lot of heroes that rely on their, their ultimates quite as much as a Sven does during team fights, because that's the majority of your damage. And once it disappears, he gets kited, he gets Diffusal Blade, lances are thrown around, he's cursed. Like, if you're left on your own against these heroes and you don't have BKB, you are just going to have a really bad time. So 
not killing FN fast enough during the song duration hurt them. Got him with the Thunder Strike. Guaranteed pullback with a glimpse, and the Poshka goes down. Ten seconds left on this Sven. This could be TNC setting up for uh, an aggressive stance. Maybe allow them to do Roshan or something like that. Meanwhile, Empire still biding their time, hoping to be able to reclaim this game going into the late 40 minute plus. We've got the Scotty almost finished up on Resolution. That'll help a lot. Resolution has done great work hiding around TNC, but he's not really entered that full on, like, I can carry this team fight by just targeting a lot of these squishy heroes. He still has to play very safe and in the back lines. This Raven. It's just too damn big. In fact, TNC not sitting up for Roshan at all. Go for the high ground push, but there goes Roger. Makes his initiation, stops the duel. Gets a great sleep out. FN once again with the force staff forward is able to stay ahead of Raven. They okay. managed to lock down the two other heroes off the Song of Siren. No buybacks from either one of them. So Empire make that initiation and immediately get slapped back down by TNC's Song of the Siren counterplay. Dude, Tim's is playing unbelievably well this game. Like all his songs have been like perfect for yeah. what they need to do. Like isolating FN first in the top lane, then, you know, fighting around the shrine. And that time just to make sure that his Sven didn't just get wrecked and they're able to disengage because of it. And that's really the, the true power, I think, of the support Naga on this team. Because Raven needs his god strength so much in the BKB to fight, having the song as a backup to say, okay, we're gonna just run and not lose anything for this. That just gives you like the leeway to, to make maybe a little bit too aggressive. But Poshka gets caught again! Maposhka, stop it! Yeah, he, he's not having a great time. He's, I mean, there's nothing outside of his base that is so important that you need to put yourself in that risky position to die like that. Because every single time he's dead, he's like, it's a free, like, force from TNC. They can try and force a team fight if they want. They go for a high ground push. They go for Roshan. All these sorts of things. Because global silence is so important. Even if it doesn't control the Naga and stop some of these BKBs, it's still important for some of these other side heroes, like the Disruptor, if Empire wants to initiate. Now, this Roshan isn't really that fast. I'm pretty sure they can get here in time if they if they so wish. Yeah, they, they're kind of lacking a uh, minus armor. They've got the AC, but they don't have a Solar Crest or anything, so Empire, four-man smoked up. Make the initiation ah, if they want to, but it just they can't find the opening. Not with Cuckoo sitting on the front lines. They don't want to really initiate on a Razor. I don't, I don't know if they realized that it was only a level two song when Tim's popped it last time, because that's maybe what they were afraid of. Yeah. Like, walking in and not knowing exactly when the song is going to come off cooldown, but Empire playing it, playing it safe, not putting themselves at risk. They're just going to try to push out mid and bottom as hard as they can, make TNC react to that first before trying to mount any of their own aggression. So I guess at this point in the game, you're looking at like what potential big game-changing items there's going to be coming out on Empire soon. Because I really think that, you know, Shiva's is going to be the choice here from FN. I feel like a Hex would also be fantastic, just because you need another reliable way to kill the Naga. So like in the draft, we thought, you know, maybe it's it's core Naga because of the way they bend. But it still ends up being a frustrating hero, even if it's not in the core capacity. Yeah. This is definitely one hero that I did not expect to, to be seeing picked up and being so successful here at TI. It seems to be a theme, man. Like, every year, like, Naga could not be played for, like, nine months. <laughs> and then TI happens. Boom. Group stage, you see Naga again. Naga will always find a way. It's the type of hero that it's just a plan B, you know? Oh, well, the fight's going bad. Song, run away. Raven goes for it, takes down that tier three. And Empire not in position to be able to defend this very well. In fact, he's just gonna be able to take the melee racks. Well, that was uh, unexpected. Yeah, the mid push straight into a quick bottom lane attack on the tier three and melee racks. Well, they knew bottom was lower anyway. And who wants to really push mid if you don't have to first? Yeah, exactly. Pushing mid is like the hardest lane. Well, nice little just raxing out here from TNC, and, and Empire feel very hesitant to chase. Can't really blame them, considering they knew Song was available. The Naga Siren also having the gem means that, you know, Tim's been really adamant about sending his illusions around, de-warding. There is just no vision right now for Empire. They are pretty much playing the game blind, and that is one of the worst feelings. Even if you're not playing against a core Naga, but realizing that that hero has a gem, and can just keep all your vision down if you're not placing your wards like perfectly. When do when do when does Empire's lineup 
finally say, like, oh, we're actually going to go outside our base and we're going to be the ones forcing the fight. I'm not sure if it ever does. It, it seems like Empire's lineup is kind of always bent on TNC making the error in some sort of push, and then after they've died, Empire push out and try and do something from there. It does feel a bit like that. I believe that what Empire wanted was better lanes into better fights. Because they had, they were winning mid, I would say. They were definitely winning the top lane, even though Sam H was getting a fair amount. Yeah. Resolution was still getting farmed. And then in the off lane, Gossick died a handful of times, but he still had like a 12 minute blink phase. Uh -huh. Like that's not bad. So I think it's just more about what happened after the laning phase that made Empire start to get to this point where they're like, okay, wait a minute. This, the support Naga has like Guardian Greaves, a gem, drums, and he's working his way towards Halberd. And the fights themselves just seem to be too difficult. Like they, they need BKB so badly on a lot of their heroes to be able to walk into these fights and feel confident. It really does feel like TNT kind of read those timings so perfectly. Raven's gonna see a read here on FN. Almost brings him down. He's got the imprisoned up. They throw down the static storm. FN is gonna be locked down into place and will end up dying for some 12 buyback. Sand Mage continues to move forward, catches Roger inside the cogs, stopping that form of initiation. They can actually kill him here. It looks like they will. He throws down the Echo Slam out of pure frustration of being locked down inside a prison of his own, oh making Gaustic. Now they have initiation, but it's countered entirely by the Song of Siren. Raven is released from his duel against Gostick, and they attempt another initiation, missing out on the Sam H hook. Resolution goes for the back line, can't really do much there as TNC turns and fights him. So he had doppelgangers away. Sam H goes for a cog TP play. Not gonna make it out, crafty man, but it is still a huge min for TNC. They take tier three and another melee racks. Those are the perfect kind of engagements for TNC. I think the, the song that time, was probably not necessary because I think what ends up happening is Raven just kills the Legion and just gets damaged because he hit him like twice and he was a 40% health. So yeah. maybe that was like the only time this game so far where Tim just had his, uh, uh, an idea of what he wanted to do but probably could have executed a bit better. Either way, they walk away with the melee racks. They'll be more than pleased. That's maybe he was afraid like the imprison on the Legion and then FN just kind of bangs on him. Well, this fence yeah, I guess he did buy there. back, that's true. He did he did buy back right after he died, so there's always a possibility of that. But otherwise, TNC are looking good. Like, they, they're not feeling really any lane pressure at the moment. They still have all their tier 2s up. You know, Empire looking at, what, two range racks is up in uh, top and bottom, respectively. Then they got their last Bastion, which is mid. Looks like they're going to try to get out on the map this time, though. Not going to just sit in the base and wait for that uh, that last blow. BKB leads a computer, almost finished up. Oh, help. Uh, a small amount? I mean, he still has this gigantic physical damage to deal with from both Raven and eventually Cuckoo's Razor as he builds up with the static link. Raven's itemization has been pretty on point this game, I feel. Yeah. I like the Lincoln's choice a bit. Fisher lead off here. Locking Raven in. This is just the poke, poke, poke. Gostick's actually going to commit here for the duel. They do try and counter with the Static Storm. Song of Siren goes out. FN still with a BKB. Tries to hit Raven, but now he's stuck with Cuckoo running at him. The Song of Siren bounces away with the Cogs. He gets the imprison off. See if he can actually make an escape. Roger's got to lock down these heroes so he can actually get the blink away, and he does so successfully. It might just cost Roger his life. Meanwhile, the Phantom Lancer. He does manage to back out, gets a lot of damage onto TNC with his illusions, but not enough to get a single kill. Empire lose two, should have actually come, they came very close to losing both the Earthshaker and the OD in that fight as well. It went just a little bit better for TNC, that could have been the end of the game. Song is just wrecking them, like every single fight, Tim's is, oh you doing my Sven? Nope. Oh you want to try to fight us? Nope. We're just going to pop Song and walk away. It's crazy to me that uh, that this Naga Siren was picked up so early. I think in some ways teams are kind of forgetting what, how to be able to play and draft against the support Naga. I think they really just took a page from, you know, maybe they watched the games yesterday where EG did it, and they were kind of like, oh, well we can just pick this hero and if it's a good core, we'll play it as a core. And if it's not, we'll just switch it into support and it's still going to have like an insane amount of influence in the game regardless. Yeah. The hero is extremely fast, 320 base movement speed. It's got six base armor. You buy a stout shield, you can just run at a lot of the heroes that are picked nowadays. Like your Shadow Shamans you think of, Disruptor, you know, it's obviously on TNC's team, but if you see those heroes and you're a Naga support, you just go to where they are and they can't do anything to you. And then in the mid game, if you get any sort of kills with your Ensnare and your Riptide, 
then you transition into these teamfight items. And no matter what happens, unless the enemy team locks you down from 100 to 0, you always have a method of getting out. And I think that's like the true strength of the hero. And plus, like you mentioned at the beginning of the draft, ambiguity is, is really important. Dude, this is so nasty. He went for Heaven's Halberd on the Agasar. Yeah, he's insanely tanky. It's probably one of the most efficient items out there. Right? It used to be like kind of people would pick up the Solar Crest, but I think Heaven's Halberd is seeing a lot more value uh, nowadays because it's just an easy to build up strength item as well. So with the plus 20 strength he just got, Smoke actually pops a lead with a Song of Siren here. On to FN. Now he's got Link and BKB, but he does take the damage before he can actually get himself away. They cancel the song pretty quickly. And it looks like our OD was not able to make it out in 95 seconds on the clock. TNC, they're just going to march uphill, and it's going to need some sort of miracle from Team Empire to be able to successfully hold against TNC in a 4 versus 5. That was an Aghanim Storm, so no way to pop the Raven's here. initiation is stopped. He does have God Strength out with a Blade Mail. They're going to try and fight him, but it's not even close. Gossing has just taken so much damage from Raven. He's still sitting at a good 1,400 HP, and that's not nearly enough for resolution to make the committal. So he goes doppelgangers backwards, but trapped by the ensnare. Sam H on top of him as well. Roger comes forward with the Echo Slam, but it's a pence of damage compared to the pool that TNC has in their HP. Miposhka is the last stand for Empire. He falls as well. And they call the GG. TNC take game one. It's a little bit of a rough start in that laning phase, particularly for Cuckoo. But they had the overall game plan well set. It felt like their timings really meshed up. Like, I love the fact that Raven bought that Blink Dagger and kind of covered that timing for the Naga Siren to get the farm needed. And then the Naga Siren, in turn, ends up being like this ultimate team fight counter to everything Team Empire had. Dude, that was... Oh. I'm going to have, like, nightmares. I don't want to ever play Legion against Naga, ever. <laughs> like, it's just so hard. Like, you have to duel the Naga. Yeah. If you don't find that opening, then you're not guaranteeing anything by jumping. And having that kind of powerful counter-initiation is what made TNC's victories seem all that easier. Empire had great lanes. It's just they couldn't transition those lanes into anything else. So I would say both Team Empire and ourselves have learned an important lesson for the drafting from this, in, in that... I don't think you can pick Leech Commander against the Naga Siren right now because of the fact that it's good versus the core Naga Siren, right? You have this hard lockdown, very important, but the support Naga Siren, it's actually not that good against, especially if you don't take map control. Yeah. Because they just, they are always stuck in the defensive situation. It's so much harder to be able to, to somehow go outside and around the enemy team as they're pushing into you to find that Naga Siren and catch him with the duel. And most of the time, it's just not going to be worth it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, you don't want to commit a duel to a support. Yeah. It's like... Especially a tanky support, right? Naga Siren's not doing any damage into that Blade Mail. He's just really not. Yeah. He went Guardian Greaves, so he's got tons of HP, tons of armor. He's he's just not going to die to your right clicks plus Blade Mail. It's not even going to be close. So even if you do duel him, you have to have your whole entire team follow up. Yeah, I was I was really a fan of what TNC did this game. Hopefully, you know, Empire able to showcase a little bit uh, stronger of a performance in game two. Yeah, we'll see you at Fresh Drafts, game number two, on the way.